Exosomes are small, extracellular vesicles that transfer lipid, protein and RNA cargoes between cells. They have important roles in intercellular communication, but Nicole Meissner-Koba from the Novartis Institutes for Biomedical Research in Basel, Switzerland, is primarily interested in exosomes as potential vehicles to deliver therapeutic RNAs to target cells in vivo. So what we got interested in was trying to understand how exosomes are interacting with recipient cells and how they deliver their RNA cargo and whether or not they might be more efficient in doing so than the lipid nanoparticles that we've been using as artificial formulations to deliver therapeutic SI RNAs that we worked on preclinically. Meissner-Kobo and colleagues, led by graduate student Wolf Heusemann, purified fluorescently labelled exosomes from HEK293 cells, and then examined how, compared to lipid nanoparticles, they were taken up by a variety of different cell types. One thing that became very apparent was that the lipid nanoparticles really accumulate over time at the cell surface. So they were forming these lipid island patches with very, very little amount being in the cytos or entering the cell after a few hours. Whereas exosomes didn't accumulate at the surface of the cells at all and already after a few minutes we started to see internalization. They seem to enter the cell as if there were no boundary, essentially. They're taken up as single vesicles. And what was really surprising is that they also stay single intact vesicles within the cell for a very long time. And uh, another very peculiar behavior was that they didn't just seem to enter the cell randomly across the cell surface, but there were really hot spots of cell entry. These hotspots turned out to be at the bases of dynamic phylopodial protrusions, sites of active actin remodeling that are commonly associated with endocytic events. Wolf was really able to see that phylopodia actively recruit exosomes to the cell surface. And he documented several different types of phylopodia interactions, or the predominant mode that he was able to observe is the exosomes really surfing down phylopodia to the cell body, but he also observed two other types of philopodia mediated exosome recruitment. So laterally mobile philopodia seem to really actively hinge the exosomes to the cell surface where they would sit for a while and then enter the cell. And a third type of philopodia activity that he was uh, able to document was pooling. So contractile philopodia really being shot out by the cell and when they would interact or bind an exosome, really pulling it actively to the cell surface. And it really turned out that over 98% of exosome uptake really happens at the philopodia base through these different types of philopodia interaction. Accordingly, inhibiting philopodial dynamics by blocking actin polymerization dramatically reduced exosome uptake. Oiseman et al. then turned their attention to what happens to exosomes after they enter cells at the base of philopodia. The researchers saw that individual exosomes were internalized into endosomes and remained intact as they were trafficked through the cell and delivered to lysosomes. Along the way, however, the exosome-containing endosomes appeared to scan the endoplasmic reticulum in a series of stop-and-go movements. And that is when we got really excited because several studies, including a study from my lab, has uh, shown that the ER is actually one of the major sites nucleating RNA silencing and a lot of the nucleation of translational machinery not only for secreted protein is, is also um, happening at the rough ER surface. Internalized exosomes may therefore be able to deliver their RNA cargoes directly to their site of action, which, along with their efficient phylopodia mediated uptake, would facilitate exosomes' ability to modulate the recipient cell's behavior. Intriguingly, several types of virus have previously been shown to surf along phylopodia before entering cells at the phylopodia base. Viruses typically don't invent things. Most of the time they hijack a host cell system that's already there. So it's very interesting to think that this specific route of cell entry um, mediated through phylopodia, really directing the particles right to it where um, there is very efficient cell entry, is in place for exosomes and maybe maybe some other particles as well, and that this has been hijacked by viruses and uh, also some infectious bacteria later on in evolution. 
If so, the wealth of knowledge already accumulated about viral entry pathways should provide clues to the mechanisms of exosome uptake and intracellular trafficking. But what do Meisner, Kobo and colleagues want to investigate next? I think it's really an important question to address, really how is the cargo being delivered and what are the molecular components that mediate the exposure or delivery of exosomal cargo within the cell. And I think it's really an essential question also in terms of trying to think about how we could utilize microvesicles for, for delivery of any type of therapeutics. And another question that I think could be really instructive is getting a better understanding about what are the minimal components to license vesicles into this uptake pathway. I think from an engineering and drug delivery perspective, that could be really, really informative. For now, though, you can learn more about how exosomes surf on phylopodia to enter cells at endocytic hotspots before trafficking within endosomes to scan the ER in the paper by Heusemann et al., published in the April 25th, 2016 issue of the Journal of Cell Biology. Thank you.